Hi guys. <laughs> no countdown because I'm already 15 minutes late. <laughs> so I thought I would come on and do the craft with me tonight. Um, I'll just preface, preface it with saying that, um, yeah, I'm a little unprepared and a little frazzled. So <laughs> anyway, let's make some beautiful things tonight for our spring junk journals. <laughs> hello, hello. So uh, we have a couple of things, uh, points of business first, and then we're going to get started crafting. Tonight is a craft with me live. I do it every Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually today I was a little late, um, but we work on whatever you want to work on. You don't have to make the spring junk journal that I'm working on. Um, it was a kit, so a lot of people are going to be making that journal, um, but you don't have to be working on that. You can work on whatever you want to work on. You can just craft whatever, you know, if, if you're sewing, if you're doing um, like fussy cutting or something like that. Um, yeah, you don't have to do what I'm doing tonight. And then tonight we're just going to work on uh, making some more ephemera for that journal. And then um, whatever comes up, I guess. <laughs> I had a couple projects planned. I'm hoping to still get to those things. Um, I'm just, like I said, a little frazzled. So Hopefully. <laughs> Let me pull up YouTube so I can at least see if we're actually live. I think we are, but, you know, until I see it, I don't really know. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, I need to turn off live reactions. So hang on just one second. I don't like leaving the live reactions on because um, when I look up like that, <laughs> it's because the monitor is right above my head for this one. And so I need to turn off live reactions because if I leave them on, then that kind of can make the video run slower. So we'll get rid of a couple of that and save it. Okay. So guys, how was your week? <laughs> how was your week? I see we have Vanessa's here, Annette's here. Lisa Marie is here. Maria is here. And hmm, Joyce is here. Hello. Hello. Sandy is here. Hello, Sandy. <laughs> and Nadine is here. Hello, Nadine. Awesome, guys. So, yeah, um, I know that I was a little late tonight and I'm not exactly all the way prepared. However, when I did the giveaway. Um, we didn't, we haven't, I didn't announce last week's and I didn't announce this week's yet. So how the giveaway works is whenever you're creating your spring junk journal, the spring floral junk journal, if you post anywhere on social media um, with a hashtag inked paper art, which is basically just my channel name, or, and also, you know, it helps if you tag me, Kate Marshall, in the post. Anywhere you're, you're posting, as long as, you know, follow the rules to the groups and stuff like that. But if you post using the hashtag and tagging me in it so I can see it, then I enter your name. I write your name on a little piece of paper and then crumple all the little piece of paper up for everyone who posted for that week. And then we draw one winner per week. So we did the first week's winner. The second week's winner was um, Cindy Stewart held. And then this week's winner is Linda Parent. Unless I have those flip-flopped, but I believe that's the order that they came in. So Cindy SH and Linda Parent have won $25 gift certificates to the live sales on Tuesday. And it worked out because they both shop there. So <laughs> I always felt like it would be weird if somebody won the gift certificate and they don't shop there. So anyway, um, they both won and they both shop there. There was only like a handful of posts in the last week. Um, Lisa Maria has said not to enter her. So <laughs> there was really just a handful of other posts. And so we're going to do the giveaway one more time next week. If you guys want to be entered in the giveaway, all you need to do is post on any of your social medias. Again, follow the rules, but post a picture of something that you are making for your spring junk journal. Post a picture of your cover, post a picture of a page spread that you've been working on, post a picture of a tag or a pocket or whatever it is that you're working on for your spring junk journal. 
post a picture of that. Use the hashtag inked paper art. And if you could tag my name, which if you don't know how to do that, all you really do is the hashtag is the number sign. And then you just put the number sign and inked paper art all one word. That's the hashtag. And then to tag me, all you do is start typing my name, Kate Marshall, and it will pop up and you select it. And so that's the way that you enter the giveaway. And the winners get $25 gift certificates to my live sales on Tuesday. My live sales have a variety of different stuff, a lot of vintage ephemera and paper things and French ledger pages and stuff like that. So um, basically you get a pretty nice prize um, and you get to decide how you want to spend it and what product you want to spend it on. I thought that was better than like me saying, this is your, this is your prize. And maybe that's not something you would use. So anyway, that's why we did it that way. Congratulations, guys. She is here. Hello. You won. <laughs> I haven't seen Linda. Is Linda here? Linda Parent? Linny P. I'm sorry. I should say Linny P. It, on Facebook, some of you guys use different user IDs than you use here on YouTube. So, yeah. I have really enjoyed seeing all of your guys' posts. They are wonderful. They inspire me and also other people to craft. Um, so I really appreciate you guys posting, whether or not you tag and all of that kind of stuff. I really appreciate seeing your guys' posts. Um, a lot of you are making different types of ephemera and things that, you know, I didn't really think about. So it's kind of nice to see your guys post and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, we could use it that way. So anyway, I've really appreciated you guys doing that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so did you guys have a good week? I didn't really look and see, but let me read up here. Did anybody say they had a good week? Hello, Sheila. Um, <laughs> so funny. We have to keep going Lisa Marie and Lisa Maria. Mm -hmm. Hello, Annette. I think I said hello to you. Clusters and belly bands. Awesome. So where are you guys all at in the in the process of the spring junk journal. And again, I'm talking a lot right now about the spring junk journal. You don't have to make the spring junk journal. I'm just, we're kind of getting some business here with it and then we'll move on. So where are you guys at? Are you guys, I know at least two of you are done with that journal completely. Yes. Yep. So where are you guys at? Annette, perfect. Yep. This time I made it out of a uh, antique quilt. And so there was only enough quilt covers, you know, because the quilt only produced so many covers to make a certain number. There was 36 of them, but they did sell out rather quickly. So next time around, I will try to make more kits. It just depends on what we're going to put in there. But I'm sorry you missed out. And I'm happy that you are figuring out how to make a journal with the supplies that you already have. And that's something to mention too, that you don't have to purchase the kit. You can totally just use your own supplies and craft either what we're making or whatever you feel like making and share that as well. Yay. Okay. I know I've missed some chatting. Signatures are in. Nadine says signatures are in. Cover done. Make an ephemera. Awesome. Joyce has to sew a couple things. <laughs> Carol is making a whole heck of a lot of journals. Thank you, Annette. I know Sheila is super busy too, doing a whole bunch of stuff for a retreat. <laughs> All you guys with your retreats. Making me jealous. Single signature. A lot less work, Vanessa. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome, Carol. You have three signatures. Yes, that's right. That's right. Mm, Vanessa, you know I want to go. <laughs> so there's a retreat that um, it's called Seaside Soiree. Um, it's in conjunction with a whole bunch of people, and I don't have all of the full details. Um, I was invited to go and I would like to go. However, 
um, just certain situations going on that with my son and his health and stuff like that, that I just don't think I can do it. But every day I wake up and I think about it and I'm kind of jealous and I want to go. I know. Plus it's just work is kind of crazy. <laughs> so I don't know if I could just disappear for five days or however many days we're going to be gone. Yeah. That is awful sweet, Carol. <laughs> so I have never made it truth telling. I have never made 25 journals all at the same time. I think I might have made 18 or 22, 22 maybe at Christmas time, but I think that is it. So yeah, 25 is a lot. <laughs> I'm sure he would love that, Vanessa. I'm sure he would just love that. <laughs> anyway, so um, let's get started on something. Is there anything else that I needed to tell you guys? So invoices from Tuesday barely just came out. Um, everybody's packages, so let me get some business because a lot of you guys shop with me on Tuesday. So everybody's packages will be packed. You will get a shipping invoice at some point this weekend at Monday at the very latest. But if you get a shipping invoice on Monday, please know that your package is packed, it is sealed, it is ready to go as soon as you pay that shipping invoice. If you got a shipping invoice and only one or two of you did earlier this week, it is because you were asking for it every single day, so I just sent it to you. But the way that things have to work when you do live sales, the way that I do them and in the volume that I do them is stuff has to happen on a certain schedule. So basically I have a shipping day, I have a invoicing day, etc. So invoices came out today and I did tell you guys on Tuesday that they would come out on Friday. And then I will spend the weekend finishing up. All of your stuff is in your boxes. If it's invoiced, it's already in your boxes. I just need to pull your individual boxes or packages, make sure everything is, you know, good in there and pack it up and then you'll get your shipping invoice. I have not because some of you needed me to actually open up your packages and go through each individual cut of lace and that is going to take a little bit of time. So <laughs> I needed to get invoices out today, so I have not done that. However, don't stress about it. It will all be okay. <laughs> and I will make sure that you have enough time to pay all your invoice, your shipping and everything. Don't, don't stress about it. Everything's here. Everything's good. And like I said, you'll get a shipping invoice at some point by Monday. I'm hoping to actually have the shipping invoices to you on Sunday. That way you can pay and your packages can leave here Monday morning. So anyway, I have been... I'm not going to say sick, but um, I have, I, I had an earache, right? And I couldn't figure out why I had this horrible earache. And then I figured out it's not an earache. It's actually in my jaw because I need a root canal. And it's quite painful. <laughs> and it has been making me feel like, I don't know, just, just the way that you feel whenever you're sick with something. And I even have like, I don't know if you guys can hear a little bit, but I even have like a little bit of a cold kind of symptom, but I don't know. So <laughs> I am on antibiotics. We're waiting for the antibiotics and then I will have a root canal and then everything will be back to normal. <laughs> but until then, I have this earache that is a different kind of earache and a lot of jaw pain and then taking antibiotics just kind of makes you feel lousy. So I don't know. I just don't do well with antibiotics in general. So <laughs> that has been going on for the last like 10 days, even up to two weeks, the earache thing. But I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I go to the dentist all the time, right? Because I have Sjogren's. So I go to the dentist all the time for my checkups and everything. And they, they don't like... They never said it had a cavity or anything, but then boom, all of a sudden you get a root canal, which that's not really uncommon because sometimes they just can't see it. So it is what it is. <laughs> Jaw issues from TMJ. Yes, have that also. Yeah, the TMJ actually used to give me migraines all the time. So I'm glad that that's better. <laughs> Flared, yeah. Well, 
I appreciate you guys being patient and understanding. We will be completely caught up by Tuesday because there is a whole lot more happening on Tuesday. <laughs> so let me flip the camera down so we can get started. I keep talking about a tooth or whatever it is. There we go. Okay, so for tonight, I have a new piece of ephemera that I would like to try to make. Um, I think I originally made this in like 2018. However, I have not made one probably since that time, since way before COVID. Oh, thank you, Angel. And welcome. If we have any new people here watching us maybe for the first time, go ahead and pop in like a, a hello to the chat. And everyone here is super kind, super welcoming. We all love to say hello and to get to know you. So feel free to chat with everyone. Um, you know, share whatever you would like to share with us. We would like to meet you and get to know you. A dog crate. Oh, goodness, Joyce. Goodness, Joyce. Is that current or is that, did it happen in the past, Joyce? Let me scroll up. Napkins, I am hoping to, Joyce. But, so here's what I was going to do for napkins. Let's talk about that before we talk about this new piece of ephemera. So for napkins, I was planning on doing, and I might have to go get it so we can do them tonight because, okay. So for napkins, I was planning on doing watered down Mod Podge to put the napkins down um, onto some cardstock or onto tags or something like that, right? But then I watched Jessica Rapp and Jessica Rapp used spray adhesive and she actually just... I want to spray this and I want to do this, but I don't, can we just spray this inside? Like it's not ventilated. Maybe just like one quick little spray. I don't have any place to spray it other than my desk. I don't know. Anyway, Jessica Rapp used this. It's permanent spray adhesive. And what she did is she took her napkin, you know, you remove the back of the napkin. So you just have the pretty part. I should just start doing it instead of just talking about it. I should just start doing it. Let me pull out the napkins quick and then we will either walk through making it Jessica Rapp's way. I just wasn't sure how I was going to spray this inside. I guess I was going to use like a big cardboard box as like a splat box kind of a thing, but I did not prepare that. Um, so here is napkins, right? So if you've never crafted with napkins before, and believe it or not, there are a lot of people who have never crafted with a napkin. When I say I'm going to do something with napkins, they're like, what do you mean you're going to like use, like they're like, I know it's paper, but isn't that kind of stretching thing? It's like, so anyway, how you craft with napkins and why you want to craft with napkins. First of all, napkins come in beautiful patterns. We're working on a spring floral journal. So these were the napkins that were included in your kit. So to begin with, you need to pull the backing off of your napkin. And I have whole napkins here. but So there's a white side and a pretty side. You want to pull the backing off of your napkin. If you've never done this before, you just use clear tape, some kind of tape, right? You could use a packing tape or something, but just get yourself a little piece of tape. Take the tape and stick it to that white part of the napkin and just pull it, right? And so most napkins will have two layers of this. They'll have two layers of a backing on the printed pretty side. And they do that so that napkins are absorbent, right? Because a lot of you know, the purpose is using them for like wiping your hands or your mouth on while you're eating, right? So they're made to be absorbent. So after you pull off and you can see that there is a tiny bit of pattern on the second backing part, you could save that and use that. There are projects that you can do with just this backing stuff for tonight. I mean, honestly, I have a big pile of the backing that I have saved. So for tonight, I am just throwing mine away. But 
So you pull off all of the backing. And if you get to a part that's just, you know, that's stuck, just get another piece of tape and, and do it. And I might just do that here and pull it from this direction. So once you get all of this off, you basically have a piece of decoupage paper. And you can put napkins, this is the backing all off of that one. You can put this down over top of anything. You can decoupage this over any type of crafty project you're doing. I've seen people decoupage this over top of a piece of wood or a craft paper box or any type of thing, right? But we're going to do it over paper today. Napkins a lot in cereal bags. Yeah, that's kind of why I was thinking I better not spray it in here, especially because it's permanent. <laughs> well, welcome, Carol. Welcome. Awesome. Hello, Judy. Cool. So. I told, took the backing off and how Jessica did it is she took a piece of cardstock. Now she used a 12 by 12 and, and in truth, I will also be using a 12 by 12 piece because it will fit beautifully on this napkin, right? So she took a piece of cardstock, any type of cardstock you want to use. She sprayed this either outside or in a slap box kind of situation. She sprayed this on her cardstock. Then she took her cardstock and curled it like this with her fingers, like this with her fingers. And she had her napkin wrong side face up, wrong side face up, took her cardstock. She bent it like this so that she didn't get any wrinkles. And she put it down middle and then sides and then smoothed it out and cut around the edge. And then she had this beautiful, basically custom piece of, you know, of cardstock. So this one has, you can see the direction of the pattern, but a lot of them don't have direction in the pattern. So for this one, how I'm going to use it is I'm going to make tags, right? I'm just gonna make a little tag. Do I have a shipping tag? Let me see. I know I have a million shipping tags, but can I get to a shipping tag? <laughs> so take a shipping tag or whatever kind of tag base you want to use and just put your napkin down over it with Mod Podge or whatever your preferred glue is. And we're going to come out with something that looks like that. So basically we're creating the perfect background layer. And then from here, you could either leave this just as it is, right? just with napkin over it for decoration, or you could add labels, you could embellish further. If, if you were using one of these floral ones, you could put additional embellishments or whatever on top of it. Um, you could still do that with this one. However, you know, you don't want to cover up your bird. So this one even has some little bit of writing. So I think crafting with napkins, it's, it's a, it's something different, right? So we can all make tags and just put a piece of scrapbooking paper or a digital paper over it and get the same look. But when you're going through your journal, you're gonna have a different texture because it was created with napkin than you would if it was created with paper. So all of these little bits of ephemera that we put inside of journals, they're supposed to be something for either the owner if you're gonna sell the journal or yourself to pull out later and they're supposed to be special, right? They're not just utilitarian just to write, you know, your, your journaling on the back. They're actually supposed to be special, you know, something that is interesting. And so the napkin, because it remains kind of fabric feeling, even if you Mod Podge it, um, it's just a different texture. Now you could crinkle up your napkin and create a bunch of wrinkles on it to give a different look. There's many different kinds of know, crafting with napkin techniques out there on the internet. I just happened to see Jessica's with the cardstock and the spray. And I was like, okay, well, that's how I want to do mine. 
but I didn't figure out how to do that inside yet. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> so that is basically how you remove the backing. And if you're gonna use spray adhesive, then you would just take it outside and spray your cardstock or, you know, do it some kind of safe way so that you weren't breathing in fumes and getting your desk sticky or whatever. Um, let me, if I go get Mod Podge, we can glue it down, but literally all it is, is gluing your napkin down to your tag. You don't have to use the whole napkin either. If you want, say you wanted this bird, you just wanted this bird, you could take a water brush pen and take and trace around the bird, leaving yourself a little bit of a margin, right? Trace with a water brush, just with water in the water brush around the bird. And then when you trace with the water brush, it allows the napkin basically to pull apart and, and it just, it's like fussy cutting without fussy cutting, I guess. So it allows you to take out one element out of a napkin. I use a water brush when I'm trying to get pieces of a napkin. Does that make sense? You could use collage medium. Mod Podge is usually what I use, but I water it down. You could also use regular Elmer's glue and just don't water it down too much, but just water it enough to where you get a good spreadable consistency. And if you're gonna use Mod Podge, I would recommend that you put Mod Podge on the tag or actually probably with most of your glues, you're gonna put it on the tag and then you're gonna put your napkin over it or flip your tag, you know, after you've got glue on down on your napkin. You don't really wanna put Mod Podge on the top of it because Mod Podge tends to stay sticky. So if you put Mod Podge on the top of your napkin and you put this in a journal, it may stick in a pocket or something else may stick to it. Mod Podge has kind of that reputation of always staying sticky afterwards. You could also rub some cornstarch over top of it. If you did put Mod Podge on the top, you could rub cornstarch over the top of the tag and that would take away any remaining stickiness. But to me, that's a lot of work. And so that's why I was hoping to move to something like this because it seems just easier and less messy, I guess. Saran wrap. <laughs> Glue stick, you can use glue stick. Yep. Okay, so we kind of touched on that. Hopefully I get the napkin part of it done and I can show you guys that when we come back um, next week. I will be here next Friday for Craft With Me. And then I think we're gonna have one or possibly two more of the spring floral journal and then we'll move on to another project. So that was that. Let's go back to the new piece of ephemera. So for the new piece of ephemera, you're gonna want like a 12 by 12 piece of paper and preferably double-sided, but doesn't have to be. <laughs> cereal bags, oh my gosh, there's so many people using cereal bags for all kinds of things. They're embossing them, they're um, actually like, kind of laminating stuff with cereal bags. Joyce, what did you use it for? Yep. <laughs> okay, so I want a double-sided piece of cardstock for this piece of ephemera that we're going to make. And I'm just trying to pick one that, I think this one might be kind of cool one that kind of goes with my journals. And I am trying to use up some of this modern, um, it's not really vintage looking cardstock. I am just trying to use it up. Plus it goes with this journal. All the colors go with this journal. This one might be fun too. Probably make a couple of these. are cute, but I don't know that they'll work for my project. Okay, so I pulled out several pieces of 12 by 12. So, sorry, I have to put my tape away. 
<laughs> that drawer is sticking out. For 12 by 12 cardstock, any 12 by 12 cardstock that you think has a pretty pattern on both sides. I'm going to cut off these branding strips. These ones are both Flourish from Maggie Holmes. Like I said, they're old cardstock, old scrapbooking cardstock. I know he says you don't have to lift this up, but I still have to lift this up. <laughs> it's cute. It's, it's kind of vintage, kind of different kind of info. <laughs> All right. So for this one, we don't want it 12 inches tall either. So I need to bring this cutter back. I'm going to use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. However, my journals are not like they're not 12 inches tall. And this piece of ephemera needs to fit within my journal. So keeping my direction of my pattern in mind, I'm going to snip some off the bottom. I'm going to make these probably, I don't know, let's go like, let's go, let's go seven and a half inches tall. Yeah. Yeah, let's go seven and a half inches tall. So seven and a half by 12 is what I have right now. <clears throat> You could use eight and a half by 11, I guess, right? And so from here, I just want to measure this piece of paper in thirds. And I know I have 12 inches. So basically I just wanna mark four inches and four inches. And I'm gonna do that on a scoreboard because I'm gonna fold this. I flipped my cardstock over just because it was easier for me to see. I don't like that little tool. <laughs> easier for me to see on this side of the paper. So I'm going to score at four and at eight. And that gives me a score every four inches. Again, it's super hard to see. Let me make sure that these all fold in. Okay, that works. So then, having trouble finding a place to put all of these big tools. So from there, we've folded it in thirds. We've measured it to exactly thirds and we folded it. Then what we wanna do is we wanna cut off an angular section so that when we fold it, we have um, a little bit of a made in, a built-in pocket, right? So for that, I'm gonna use my paper trimmer. And I'm gonna go from, so you know how we fold it in thirds, right? I'm going to use this point right here to line up my paper cutter and I'm going to cut an angle all the way down to this corner. So I'm putting that point right where the cut line is here and then I need to get this point all the way in the bottom here. So it's a little hard to show you guys but line up that line up this and this in your cut line so that you get a nice angular cut. So that is pretty much lined up there and that's pretty much lined up there. We're gonna try that. So now I've got this, right? And it folds over like this. And we've got a pocket on this side and we've got a little tuck on this side and you know you don't have another pocket. I need to fold it one more time for another pocket. <laughs> so you have it like this, right? So you've got your little tuck pocket here and your little tuck pocket here. Now you could bend it back like this 
and you've got a little tuck here and a little tuck here. And for me, I think I'm going to use it this way. Or I could refold it and do it like this. Just depends on what you think looks better, right? So for whatever paper you used, figure out whatever looks the best to you. It's either houses there or houses like that. What do you guys think? Houses on the front? How did I do houses in the front like this? Yes. <laughs> houses on the front? That's what I'm voting for. Okay. So houses on the front look like this. I'm going to do that because what I'm going to have something tucked in here, this isn't going to be so plain. So now I'm going to crease it with that bone folder that I've buried. I'm going to crease it with the little bone folder and make sure it's all creased and then I'm going to glue it. And you can see I got this little point right here. So I'm just going to snip off this little point. And that's because when I put it in my cutter, I didn't have it lined up perfectly. So all I'm going to do to fix that is snip off the other little point just a little bit. And now it's perfect. <clears throat> it was an easy pocket, right? And so on a journal page, this is our journal page, right? It opens like this. You can glue this in different ways and achieve an extra pocket, right? So you can glue it down, you know, just like this. And let me find something to tuck. Well, I just need one little journal card. One little journal card. Okay. So you can tuck a tag here, right? That's a pocket, that's a pocket. And you could have it where you glue a tag, glue it so that you can put a tag straight down the top, right? But you could also scoot this over, like say I was gluing it on this side and put it here and then glue it on these three sides and have this be a big pocket for like a journal card to go in. So you have different ways of gluing it on your page to add additional pockets. You could glue it as an L shape and then it's just a big tuck where you put it in. <laughs> um, you could make it on a, hint, a hinge and do it that way. Um, you could fold it around a page, but when you fold it around the page, you're gonna get your pocket here and your pocket here, and then you're gonna have like a big pocket here or that same tuck in. But for me, I like it like this so that I can see all the different pattern, but you could certainly glue it that way too. So let me glue this one down. Yeah, let me glue this one down. I forgot to fill this again. And I told myself all week long, don't forget to fill your art glitter glue. Did I listen? No, I did not. <laughs> so just one more pocket that we made style of pocket. Now you could hole punch this since I trimmed my corners. It kind of looks like a big tag. You could hole punch and just kind of make it look like a tag. I think that might look cool on this one just because the way it worked out with the, the top corners. But that's what it looks like. And then we will just make some stuff to go, you know, inside of it. I think it's cute. I like if I'm going to use it as a pocket on this side. Um, if I'm going to use it as a journal card pocket, I like using it on this side because this is the folded side. So it's a lot more sturdy on this side than this side. Now I use card socks, so it's fine either way, but my preference would be to have your journal card going in on this side. So that is one, and then we will decorate that. Oh. 
What are we talking about? Are you a ruler and a craft knife? <laughs> yeah, I have to be careful with the um, X-Acto knife, the craft knife. <laughs> I only use those really for taking apart books. But yeah. Anyway, so that was one. Let's make the other one. And we also have this, right? So this is our off cut. And so I'm not throwing this away. This is actually just another pocket. So you could just put that there. You're going to put them on the same page, but you could have that one on that page. And then you could put, you know, this one here and you'd still have your same two pockets. That's the off cut piece of it. So I guess we should glue that and just try to use that. I mean, there's no reason why you cannot use that. I mean, this one happens to have upside down houses. So you would want to kind of think about your pattern that way because it's the off cut, right? So if it mattered. But I would just use it like this and decorate this. You know, put something here so you don't see upside down houses. Or use a non-directional double-sided cardstock. I have been dying to get into a new pack of this. Um, that bird song, what is it called? Yes, bird waltz. Let's use bird waltz if I can find a non-directional one of those. This is bird waltz paper from Jen Bishop. I mean, that one is very, very much in the colors of our journal with the pinks and the greens. We may be using that one. Well, this one's pretty non-directional there. So many pretties. Okay, I'm going to use that pink and green one. We're going to see how that comes out. So starting from scratch, oops, starting from scratch again, going to cut it to size, score it, fold it, all of the things. A lot of people love so this is many, many, many um, junk journal creators' favorite paper pack that was ever made. Many people. <laughs> See, this is their most favorite paper pack ever. So it does have a couple words that are going to be directional, but I'm going to try to ignore that for this part. And I think seven and a half was a good size for a journal page. So I'm going to do seven and a half again. And that also leaves us a nice four inch piece that we could cut down and make pockets or tags or something else. So there's that. Let's score it. And again, we're scoring at four and at eight. Now blue fern is pretty thick, pretty thick cardstock. Okay, so you probably want to use a score tool, a score mat if you're going to use blue fur. <laughs> so now we're going to cut it again. And this time I'm going to try. So in truth, it works better when you don't have this little floppy thing. If you have a cutter that does not have a little floppy thing, it is a little easier. Okay. So now we have to figure out which way we want it. So if I do it like that, that's my pocket. And obviously we're gonna need to put some white lace or something on that. Or 
I can fold it and do it like that, which I think is my preference. I don't know. I like both of these. Yep, like that. So that's that one. And then let's see how the little off cut looks of this one. And I'll glue that here in a sec. So this is the off cut. This is my pretend journal page. Ooh, the off cut is very pretty on this one. So for this one, I'm going to stick it here. And it's going to be a tuck spot here and a big tuck spot here. I mean, I think you could probably wrap it around a page again, but I mean, all you're really getting is a tiny tuck spot down here. And then on that side, you're getting a weird angle. I mean, you could cut it again, but I think for me, it just works better like this. And we'll do that little tuck spot. And I'll leave it where I just glue it here and here so that you can tuck something big back in there and still have that little tuck of a pocket. Okay, so those two, and I have this one sitting here, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it because it's already cut and it's already sitting there. Lou Fern, yes, Lisa Maria. Hmm. No jumping the tracks. Blue Fern, you can get on their website. I'm not exactly sure where else you can get it at the moment. But... So now we're going to cut. I think I can kind of see the line on this one, whereas I couldn't see the score line on the other ones. So I'm going to try to do it before I fold it. We'll see. Okay, so there's my third one. You guys know I'm making three spring floral journals because I had some covers that were um, that were slightly damaged. So I figured I would go ahead and I, I didn't put those in your guys's kits, and so I used them to make journal covers and just covered up the damage. So I've got this one, which is very green, or. I can do what, this way. I think my preference is that. Cool. So let's glue all of that. I may have to use art glitter glue or not art glitter glue. Um, Fabri-Tac to glue some things tonight, <laughs> just because somebody forgot to fill her art glitter glue again. Ah. Okay, there's that one. I'm gonna leave all the off cuts because I don't know what page. I mean, I guess I could glue them, but I don't know exactly what page they're going on yet. <laughs> oh goodness. That was a whole lot of art glitter there. Blue Fern is just such nice paper. I'll get a baby wipe clean off my desk here. So there are our three that we made for three different journals. And you can see, hopefully you can see the difference in the clipped corners and the non-clipped corners. I kind of like the clipped corners. It was a happy accident. 
And then that's the blue fern one. And it might not be the best way to use up a beautiful piece of blue fern um, paper because you're losing a lot. But you could also just clip this in or just leave, you know, make it a tag, like I said, and just put it in a pocket, but it's got pockets on the tag. Lots of different things to do with it, but there's the three that we made. And then we have offcuts that can be made into different kinds of pockets later. And I'm just going to leave mine until I know exactly where they're going, just to make sure how I want them to work out, you know? So I'm going to leave mine for now. That's what I've got so far. And see if I do it this way, my flowers are upside down. So I, I don't know. You got to watch your directional paper. Okay, so from there, let me put these in this pile, I guess. Stay down. Um, we have some offcuts that we could do some tags with or something else, or maybe I'll just clip them and make pockets. Like this blue fern one would make great pockets. Um, these are four inches. They're going to make very big pockets. If I leave them at four inches, let me hold off on those for a minute too. Okay, moving right along. Ferns, like the clipped corners. Bird waltz. I'm sorry, am I calling it the wrong one? What did I call it? No, it's blue fern paper. Did I call it the wrong thing? I don't know. If I called it the wrong thing, I apologize. <laughs> um, let me move on to another piece of ephemera. So there were some cute little notepads that I wanted to make with you guys. You guys know that I like to put cute little notepads in all of my journals. So I would like to make some cute little notepads. Um, hang on just one second. <laughs> Let's try doing a different kind of project. Where are my vintage checks? So in this journal kit, you got a vintage check. If I can find mine, let's make a little matchbook notepad out of that vintage check. I mean, obviously mine are somewhere here in this room too, but in the kit, it came with a vintage bank check. So if I can find that vintage check, we will make something with it. Okay, here's the little vintage check. We could use that to make a little matchbook notebook. So to make a matchbook notebook, you're just going to fold it into thirds, right? So I'm going to fold my little check into thirds, kind of into thirds. Like this little tiny section down here isn't a third, technically. So you're folding it like this to where you have a small section at the bottom. And then this top section is going to clip in here once we're done. And we're going to make a little tiny notepad inside of here. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like a little matchbook. You guys remember what matchbooks look like? I didn't really make matchbooks anymore. I mean, I guess they do, but I haven't seen one in a long time. But so, yeah, a little matchbook notepad. We could do that with the little pink check. Or it could just be tucked in a pocket as ephemera. You could make a tag out of it. It's called Bird Waltz. Let me show you the strip. And it's by Blue Fern. Bird Waltz. It's Jen Bishop is the designer and it's Blue Fern Studio. I don't know if that will show up for you. Blue Fern Studio. Yep. I'm hoping she still has this paper. I didn't stock up on it if she's gotten rid of it. 
So this is also a little project that you could use your Tim Holtz stapler on. Um, so if you have a Tim Holtz stapler, then we can use that. What you're going to want to do is find a whole bunch of offcuts of your paper. So hopefully at this point in the game, we do have some offcuts. I usually have a section of my scraps that I keep um, offcuts in. I don't know where mine are at the moment. So we will make some new scraps. <laughs> so I usually put like coffee dyed paper in my little notepads. Um, so you just wanna make sure that whatever size paper you're making for your little notepad, it will fit within the boundaries of your little checkbook for your little matchbook. And you can't make it too thick, right? Because it's just made in a check. Now, if you had one of those big French checks, you could certainly use a big French check and make a, a bigger notepad, right? So let's see if we can really get like maybe six pieces of paper folded up in here. So just make a little scrappy notepad. You can have them be different kinds of paper, different lengths, different, you know, whatever you want to do. But you just make some little paper scrap pieces or use your offcuts. And then you're going to sew this, stitch this, or Tim Holtz staple this into your little check. And then this is how we're going to close our notebook down here at the bottom. I'm going to temple staple mine. Just checking. This is actually just ever so slightly too long to close nicely. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller. Because you want yours to be able to close without too much hindrance. So that's better. That's a better size. So that's what I have. And I'm just going to staple it right on the fold line with the template stapler. If I was at the sewing machine, I would probably just run a stitch through it. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm in here. So little template staples are right there. Let me think about this for a second. We did it this way. I've never done it down here. And then just, no, you won't be able to write in it. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it where I was going to do it, in the middle. I need to get it in there. I need to be able to reach. I need a long arm Tim Holt stapler. <laughs> I need Tim to make a long arm one the extra long arm. I'm just going to do it as best as I can. There we go. And then fold down your notepad. And then for this little bit here, you want your little cover, right? The check is the cover. You want your cover to come down and tuck in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple little dots of glue and that's going to seal up this little bottom part so that we can tuck our cover in. Um, let's see if our glitter has enough in it to do a couple little dots. There we go. Ever so slightly a tiny little bit of glue right there. So I'm going to do it like this. And then I'm going to tuck my notepad in there in a second. So your notepad tucks in and then your flap tucks in. Mm, popped open my glue already. I'm going to cut down this little corner right here so that my little cover tucks in easier. There 
there we go. And then we have a little notepad. If I can get this to seal up. He just needs a minute, I think. And then we have our little check notepad. And you can decorate that. Um, maybe just put like a little flower and a label on it. <laughs> right. I need a long arm one so I can reach in, get into deeper spaces on my page with it. I think they do make long arm staplers, but they're not the tiny staplers. So then I have extra pieces of scrap paper. Like I would probably just decorate it with like something small. Like this is too big for it too, but something small right there. Okay, um, another way to make a notepad is with old Tim Holtz packaging. And I saved some from the other night when we were opening these and putting them in the bucket. And it's because I like to make things out of Tim Holtz packaging. He has sturdy packaging. And I kind of feel like, well, if I use it, then I'm not just putting it in the landfill or, you know, I don't really think in my neighborhood, I don't really think they actually recycle. I think we just separate it all and they just laugh at us when they pick it up because we've watched them in my neighborhood. Now, I know all neighborhoods are not like this, but in my neighborhood, the trash guy and the recycling guy come on the same day and they're the same company and we have two separate bins. We have a black bin for trash and we have a blue lidded bin, which is recycling. And all of our recycling goes in the same blue lidded bin. We don't separate out like glass or paper or whatever, you know. So all of the recycling goes in the blue lidded bin. And we watch him. And in the morning, the same truck goes. And he will pick up the black can and dump it in the back of his truck. And then he will immediately pick up the blue can and dump it, dump it in the back of the trash can. The big trash truck. So how is that recycling if you're just dumping it in the same trash truck as the trash? <laughs> so we've watched him do that a couple times. And sometimes he'll come and he'll pick up all the black bins on our street and he'll just do a circle. And then he circles back around and picks up the same blue bins in the same truck. So I don't really think we have recycling where I live. I think that they just tell us that we have recycling and we don't actually have recycling. That's what I'm thinking is happening. Anyway, I'm gonna recycle these into notepads. These are bigger notepads and I want to um, cover them with some pretty paper. So Tim Holtz packaging oftentimes has this little flap up here and this makes the perfect little notepad piece, right? You could also flip this around and make it a little pocket to tuck things in. So we can do pockets or we can do notepads. I'm probably gonna do notepads. I just think they come out pretty and I like making them. So I'm gonna make those and I'm gonna decoupage pretty paper onto them and we'll put a notepad in here and tie it with some pretty ribbon at the top. These journals are very feminine and frilly so pretty ribbon bow would be cute up there. Let's do that quick with some pretty paper. Um, I think I would like to use paper that goes with the digital kit that we're using. This might also be another opportunity where you could um, maybe put the napkins on there, decoupage the napkins. You could put botanical paper on there. You could put music paper on there to cover it up. I happen to have some extra printed digitals down here and this bin is so full of things I really need to separate it out but you could use wallpaper. What do you guys think about my recycling? See where, where I live we don't have a town. We're not a town. We're unincorporated. Um, it's because my neighbors are too cheap to pay higher property taxes to become a town. And we've tried many, many times and my neighbors just refuse to pay the higher property taxes. So we don't get to be a town and we don't get to have town services like a fire department or a police department or any other town service. <laughs> it's kind of something that I feel very strongly about. 
I don't understand why my neighbors won't. Um, I mean, how can you live in a place and not have a police or fire department? Like, it just makes no sense to me. But my neighbors just refuse to pay the property taxes for city services. They want to go it alone, I guess. So that means the rest of us who also live here just are stuck where they are, you know? So here's my digitals. There's a whole big bunch of digitals down here. All that to say, I think we don't have recycling where I live. I keep separating it, separating it out and putting it in the bins. And hopefully one day they will actually have recycling. So I'm just looking for paper to decoupage or to decorate these, these notepads with. There's quite a lot of this because it printed and it had streaks in it. So I don't use those ones when they have streaks in them. Yeah, we were kind of shocked when we first saw the, the trash guy do that. <laughs> I was like, am I just seeing this like for the first time or has this always been happening? So then we started paying attention and sure enough, it was happening all the time. We just make sure I don't have anything else interesting in here. These. Okay. <laughs> um, there is not because all of the towns have recycling centers and they only take certain things. Like if I had a lot of cardboard boxes, I could take it there. Or if I had like house paint or something like that, you could take those kind of things there. But they don't take just general um, mixed recycling things like that. I know. So I'm going to make these little notepads really, really cute. And then I'm going to put like coffee dyed paper um, in them. So I think those three will work. I like how light this one is. Maybe we will use that one. No, I want the owl. Okay. So those are my three papers. And honestly, I said decoupage, but I'm just going to glue them on because I like these. So these are going to decorate and cover the base of it, right? So I'm going to put a pretty piece of paper that I like on the base of it on the inside. And my notepad is going to be on top of that. And then we will cover up this strip right here in a second. So for this, I'm just going to use glue stick and glue stick this. need a piece of plastic. I'm just going to glue stick this and stick it to the paper. And you don't even really have to cover up this part that I'm covering with glue right now because it's just really like coffee dyed paper. It's just a little shiny or whatever, you know, but it doesn't have any words or anything on it, so you really don't have to cover this up when making a little notepad. But I include a notepad in pretty much every journal that I make, and it's just great writing space. Um, I think people really like to get them in journals that they buy. The feedback that I've gotten from buyers you can see I'm struggling with that. Feedback that I've gotten from buyers, they all really like the notepads. So something to consider if you're making your journal to sell that buyers seem to love getting notepads in them. Big chunk of glue. Probably not that many people in my neighborhood pay attention to what they're doing out there, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're supposed to be doing that for some reason. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then I'm going to cut it. We can do the next one. You don't have 
have recycle. My mom's neighborhood, my mom and dad's neighborhood, they don't have recycle either at all. They have to throw everything in the trash or take it themselves. And they, again, where we live, you can't just take <laughs> household recycling. It can only be like bulk cardboard or paint or like you know, um, oil or something like that. It has to be a specific thing that you're not supposed to put in your regular bins. I think I got this all. And I'm not gluing up here. I'm only gluing the bottom part. Ooh, I could have the blue side or this flower side with the bird. So, do you guys have plans for the weekend? The county over has to take trash and recycling to the dumping area. Wow. wow. <laughs> you messed with some lace for the inside cover of your journal notepad thingy all day yesterday. One more to do. I have to make everything in triplicate, right? So I am. I was planning on sewing in the signature today, but in truth, mine are not ready for that. I could do it and then just suffer the consequences later. But I would really like to do a little bit more work before I sew that signature in. So if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to hold off doing that until next time. Just because I thought I was going to have time to work on it and I haven't because I haven't been feeling good. Um, I haven't really done anything that I wanted to do. <laughs> Because I honestly have been feeling very poorly. Which side of this one do I want? Butterflies? So when I'm done doing this, I'm probably going to be tired. But shipping and stuff will happen this weekend and we'll get all caught up. Because we have a massive amount of things to get to on Tuesday. Told you guys I got another humongous shipment and also I have some videos coming out that I pre-recorded that I spent some time yesterday editing just to do something. Um, so I have some recorded videos coming out and I did figure out YouTube. The reason why it wouldn't let me upload some videos that I already tried to upload <laughs> is because apparently from the last time I uploaded a pre-recorded video which was like Christmas time to today, they have changed their terms and conditions. And because, um, because I'm eligible to run ads on my channel, but I choose not to run ads on my channel, they needed me to, I guess, agree to terms and conditions, even though I'm not running ads on this channel. Um, so I guess that was what the block was. <laughs> so now that I've agreed to their terms and conditions, it does let me upload videos to YouTube again. So you guys will see some videos coming out this weekend. Um, I'm just going to cut these with scissors quick. And truthfully, the cheap little Costco scissors, I really like them. They come in a three pack from Costco. Mine already have ink all over them because they're white. But these cheap little scissors from Costco work really, really well. And if you're like me and you're always like switching out your scissors... Yeah, these ones work really well. They come in a three pack for like $9.99, but at Christmas time they were $6.99. Costco doesn't really have crafting supplies, but every once in a while you find something there. This is the last one I did. Let's do this guy. So you could sew around these on your sewing machine on the bases if you wanted to. I don't think we're going to do that just so that we can get these done today. Now I am going to cover the backs 
Maybe. Maybe we're going to glue this in. I'm not really sure yet. If you're not gluing it down to a page, then you need to cover your backs, right? But if you're going to leave it and glue it on a page, then I guess you cannot cover it. Now, this little piece of paper, I didn't glue down. I'm just going to fold it and I'm going to cut that piece of paper off. Because we could use this piece of paper to cover this with. And so I folded it to get a line and now I'm going to cut it. If we do a good job, we might be able to use it to cover that little strip. So that's going to be our notepad. And I might mix and match them, but you could use this right there to cover that. I don't know that I love it matching. We'll see. But let's cut the other ones. <laughs> it is pretty, Sheila. So all I did is I just folded it in the crease and then cut it. <laughs> I'll be all right. I'm just feeling very tired from antibiotics, I think. And I don't know how this happened, but I don't know. Go to the dentist often when you have Sjogren's, you know, because <laughs> it kind of can make you have dental issues, you know. So, yeah, but somehow I still got it. Okay. Maybe we should just make like a lacy topper. I'm kind of feeling a lacy topper, like just layering up a bunch of different lace up here. I don't think I want paper. I think you guys will agree with me. I don't think I want paper up here. I think I want lacy stuff up there. We'll save these bits. They could be used for something else, but let's put lace up here. Vanessa, neither you or I can ever get any rest. We're too busy. Aw, that's awesome that they check on you. Oh, somebody having painful skin? What's happening? Yes, it is, Joyce. I didn't know that other people with fibromyalgia were having flare-ups, but I know both my son and I both are. So I guess maybe it's just time of year. Who knows? Let me get some lace on these. And then we'll just make little paper to go in there. So for the lace, I want to put lace on here to cover up the entire thing. So this guy has one of those holes. I'm, I'm going to cover that right up like it isn't even there. Um, I think I want to put coffee dyed paper on here and then put lace. I don't know. Let's see if it shows, right? I guess we'll test it first and see if it shows. So for lace, I have this bin. Let me get it. And it has all kinds of lacy scraps in it. And so I just need a little more room here. <laughs> Let me put these scraps in the top of this. Sorry for reaching in front of the camera there. So I just want to make a big bunch of lacy cluster with little doily things on top of there. And you can kind of see some words through there. So I think I'm going to cover it with coffee dyed paper first. Let me move that one to the back. I have two bins that I keep right to that side of me. <laughs> um, just with all manner of supplies in there actually. This one. Too thin. Okay, 
So let me cut some strips and cover the tops of these quick, just because I don't want to go to all this trouble to make these beautiful little notepads and then <laughs> have it like, I don't know, show through. So I'm just gonna cut a little strip. And then let's cut the other side too, because we're gonna need several of these. I think these are going to be really pretty with the lacy stuff at the at the top. So like little tiny doilies, little tiny cut doilies would be really cute right there on the top. So I'm going to cover this little part with coffee dyed paper and then layer up the lace on it. We'll be okay with two of them. I can piece together the third. Okay. So now I'm going to glue stick this part. I mean, really, I probably could have just left it. It would have been okay. I'm just overthinking it probably. <laughs> okay, so I'm lining it up and gluing that down. We'll let that one sit. So you guys won't be throwing away your Tim Holtz packaging anymore. So I appreciate you guys seeing what papers and things you like. But do keep in mind that I would like you to not promote um, on my channel of things. If it comes from me, it's fine. But otherwise, just watch the promotion. Because <laughs> many reasons. But <laughs> I would just prefer if promotions came from me. So that includes mentioning those other shops. And it's not really a problem. I'm just saying we have to adhere to the rules so it doesn't become a problem. Okay, I'm trimming these off. And I'm just gonna piece this one because again, we're gonna layer lace over it. So as long as I don't see words, I'm good with it. Let that one sit. And then I see that I have just a little sliver um, hanging over the edge here. So I'm just going to trim that. There we go. There we go. No, I, I don't. Well, there's like two or three copy dyed paper digitals in my Etsy. It's not a conflict of interest that way. What it really is, is we don't have permission to um, talk about other people's channels and other people's businesses. And I have had in the past where I was mentioning someone in a very positive manner and the person, somebody else had something negative to say in chat about this person and their business. And then it became a whole thing of don't mention me on your channel and all of that stuff. So now I would rather just promotion come from me. And that way I know that these are shops that I work with and their owners have the same values as I do and treat their customers in the same way that 
you know, you guys should be treated. I just, I don't want to get into another issue where some other shop owner is unhappy that we are talking about them kind of a thing. No, you guys are fine. I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> right? Friday does seem, it, it seems like it goes really, really slow, but then Friday is come and gone really quickly. You guys are all fine. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to say so we don't get off on this whole thing. I'm just very leery now after that one incident. And <laughs> I'll stop. I don't like to say anything negative about anyone's shop ever. Like, I really try not to do that. So anyway, let me glue some base layer down and then let's get to collaging a bunch of lacy things on the top of this. Okay. So let's put a little bit of Fabri-Tac down. And this is just my base layer. So I'm basically going to make kind of like a little snippet roll up here on the top. And I'm starting with this kind of lacy Swiss lace. <laughs> lacy Swiss lace. That sounds funny. It is like a Swiss eyelet. And I'm starting with that as my base layer across the top. And then from there, we're going to just layer and cluster kind of like a snippet roll where there's just lacy stuff everywhere. You guys are fine. I just wanted to say it before we get into something with somebody, right? Like, and I've also told other people like, you know, in the channel rules and stuff that we're not supposed to be doing things like that. And I just want to make sure that I stay consistent no matter who it is that's doing it. You know what I mean? You guys are fine. i totally cool with it. <laughs> just wanted to say it so we could, you know. I'll be on the same playing field. There we go. Okay. Let's glue that one down. Am I gluing it upside down? Some laces are so hard to tell which way to go. So there we go. And we'll move to the third. <laughs> Let me know if you guys get tired of seeing everything in thirds. I don't have to keep making all thirds, but I just get started and sometimes it's just faster and easier to go ahead with it. And when we cluster these, we're just going to cluster them all together. If you had a pre-made snippet roll, you could just be snipping off pieces and putting up here at the top. But I don't have a pre-made snippet roll. That would be nice. We should make that. I think we should do craft with me and make a snippet roll. I mean, I could just do the sewing part later, right? I need to get camera set up. See, there's a perfect piece for a fourth one. <laughs> I need to get a camera set up so that I can, you know, sew with you guys. And these will flatten out after we put them under something or whatever. Um, it's just because I glued paper to one side. So anytime you use moisture with glue on one side and you don't put moisture or glue on the other side, you're going to get curling, but that is temporary. So I'm going to get some little cluster pieces. Right. Vanessa's all for the snippet roll. We're going to do it. I mentioned the ones that I work with, but that's different. And you guys got to remember, ultimately, when YouTube gets upset or somebody else, like another creator, get upset, they get upset with the channel owner. That's why I'm saying promotion needs to come from the channel owner, because I'm the one legally, financially, everything responsible. Okay, dokie. If, I, if it comes from me and I mention it, you guys are free to talk about it because obviously it's safe and it, you know, it's fine. But I just, <laughs> I see us going down a road and I just don't want somebody to mention somebody that, you know, might have a upset 
time, like an issue with something. You guys are all being polite and nice and I'm not anticipating that happen. And I didn't anticipate it last time, but last time somebody mentioned they had a problem with one creator and then the creator got upset because they're like, oh, you're trashing me on my, on your channel. And I wasn't at all. And neither was people in my chat, but somebody did have some sort of issue with them. And, you know, obviously I don't know who has issues with who. So I try to stay out of it all. But like I said, as the channel owner, I think pretty much all comes back down to you, right? Um, that's just kind of how that stuff works. So I'm just going to put some different kinds of lace up here to keep creating that base. So I want to do some of this and then I need a bunch of little doilies. Um, I think I have a bucket. This lace is good for layering. This lace is good for layering. Yeah, here is a bucket of doilies. These aren't necessarily the little doily pieces. But there are doily pieces in here. Like, I want to put some of these up there. If I had some scraps of embroidery in here, that would also be super cute. Like, here's little ones. Those guys will work. So I'm just picking out a bunch of various little things that we can layer up there. And I don't want to make it too thick if we're going to glue it down. And maybe we shouldn't glue it because it may be too thick as it is <laughs> and bumpy. So probably I'll go ahead and cover the back of it so that the person who is getting these journals can take it out of a pocket. So I chose pretty much white doilies. Um, I may come back in this bucket here in a second and pick out some other colors just so we can have a variety up here. And I just want to cut some snippets of lace just randomly. Hello, Wendy. You're shipping your journals off? Wow, Cheryl. Did you do flip through? Hi, Gigi. <laughs> okay. Back to this. Let's go ahead and get started. I do think I want some ivory color ones. I chose all white and I was like, um, you're not going to be able to see all of that if you leave it where it is nothing but white color, right? like white. So I think we could use something like this, but maybe cut it in half. Have a couple of those. I don't know what we want to do there, but let's start layering. We'll figure it out. So these points that come down are always my favorite to put on all kinds of projects. I'm going to cut one of these in half. I just want to see what it looks like. Yep, I like it. Okay, fabric tech. I love cutting up embroidery pieces. It makes me sad, but I also love it because then you get to look at every tiny little detail. And I think like embroidery, people that hand embroidered things like, you know, 1950s, whatever, um, they spend a lot of time on it, right? So it's kind of hard to cut it up, but we're not going to most of us use those kind of things in our homes anymore right now. So um, it's just kind of not really in style, right? We're not going to, most of us don't have end tables covered with embroidered doilies. Some people do, and it kind of is 
a style right now. Um, I could, um, how do they call it? Granny Chic and also mm, Cottage Core. I don't know. <laughs> but, so yeah, it's it's definitely a style and people are using them again. But mm -hmm. I just think there's so many and, you know, we can't save them all. We can't use them all. A lot of them have stains and stuff on them. So cutting them allows me to appreciate every single little bit of it, right? And I can cut around stains and flaws and things like that. Only one of three is completed. I get it. Good night, Cindy. Thanks for joining us. Sorry gonna be working on this one for a little bit here so then I'm just gonna keep layering that's kind of cute um, I don't know how much more I want to do I don't want to make it too bulky um, yeah what was I saying I don't know. People aren't really using embroidery anymore. I don't think that adds anything. We're just going to do this. Now, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm using rusty hardware in this journal. So in that case, I don't need to put a rusty safety pin up here. Um, you know what I didn't plan for is putting my ribbon through there. <laughs> we'll have to plan for that here in a second. I'm just going to glue this on. So you should make your notebook before you decorate the top of it. I just got excited. I don't know how much you guys can see, but that's where I'm at so far. And it's going to have something here in the center, but I'm not sure what that is. And that's what I was getting at. I'm not sure if I want to use rusty um, safety pins, like rusty hardware. I think I'm going to probably do a gold or a silver hardware in this one. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know that until after I see the cover to kind of get a general idea of what looks better, right? I, I mean, I've seen the cover, but I just need to see it completed before I choose my metal hardware. That's just the way my brain works. So that is that. Let's go ahead and put paper in it, and then I can punch my holes to put the paper in. So ideally, you would put your paper in before you would decorate it. However, I did get excited. So let's get some paper. We will save all of this here for a second, but let's get some paper and put some paper in that guy. Old tablecloth? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, what kind of tablecloth is it, Joyce? And what kind of stain is it? Because that's what it depends on. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Lisa Marie. Uh, I keep saying it. Marie. Uh. <laughs> So you can use a variety of different things if it is, you know, if it's safe for your fabric. Sometimes I just put lemon juice on them and put them in the sun in the yard and that gets out staining. It depends on what kind of staining, though. If you look up like how to treat stains in old quilts, that will probably give you some ideas. So I need a bunch of papers for my notebook. We know that we're going to have several copy dyed papers in here. So I'm just going to size those real quick and rough tear them. And it is going to be a scrappy notebook. Looking for my ruler. A scrappy notebook. And I want to see the base of it, right? So when I put my papers in, that'll be good. Okay. So we'll have some that'll be this length. Making lots of good scraps. Ooh. 
The blue bear moved. I'm trying to tear two or three at a time. What kind of tablecloth is it, Joyce? Is it like cotton, made out of cotton? Okay, in our kit, there was probably some papers that we could put in here. Whether, if you didn't use like the cabbage dyed and the avocado diet and all those, you could put those in here in your little scrappy notebook. Um, you could put music paper in your scrappy notebook if you want. That's fine. I mean, it's just kind of adds a decorative element to it. I might, mm, not that one. I might put some kind of decorated page in there. Digging through my bin. Here's a botanical page. Oh, the yellow and the purple paper, those could go in here if you didn't use them somewhere else. Those will be perfect in here. Sorry, the bin is probably loud. <laughs> Digging through it. Okay. So I'm going to use a botanical page, a yellow page, and that light purple page that came in your kit in here as well. I'm just going to size it kind of in half. Well, you really got to hold that down. OxyClean. If it... If it's a, sab a fabric that's safe for bleach, yes. If it's white, yes. And crochet. Try soaking it. Um, if your washing machine will allow you to soak it. That was a great tear. Sometimes I just let things soak in the washing machine for an entire day. You know? And don't put them in the dryer until you are sure that the stain is out the way that you want it to be out. Okay. So we're going to need more coffee dye. So these are going to be really pretty little notepads. You can see it took a little bit of time to make them, but I think they're going to be worth it. Lemon juice is also safer than bleach, but you do have to wash it. And if you're using lemon juice, you could use it the sun with the lemon juice is the best thing to do. Okay, building the notepad. Just stagger your paper. Um, it would be really nice to have some pink in here. We just don't really have pink. Paper. It would be really nice to have some. <laughs> okay. So I think we're going to put like that. And then yellow. And this one. And another coffee. And line them all up at the top. And we need a little bit more to add interest. Um, what else do I have that we can stick in here? 
just like some dictionary page would be cute in there too. Just fun things for the new owner to play with in their journal. When I use dictionary, I don't look for bad words. I just let whoever gets whatever page they get figure out what they have and what they don't have. Okay. Like I said, I would like some pink paper. Oh, hold on just one sec. Let me get some of this dyed paper if I can reach it. Let me see. I gotta move my keyboard so I can get back here and get this paper. Okay. Maybe. Yay. Do you guys remember these, the blueberry dyed papers? I'm going to use a piece of blueberry dyed paper. This is blueberry dyed paper. I just needed something else pretty in here. So we're doing it. Okay, I'm good with my notepad now. My words need to go the right way. I don't want them upside down. And that's my scrappy little notepad for that one. It's cute. It could be cuter. There's two pieces of coffee dye there. And then we're going to stick that notepad right up in there and close it. Now this one's going to have to be Tim Holtz stapled because I didn't punch my holes before I put all of this lacy stuff up here, but it's still super cute. And then you've got a decorative back, right? So you could make your paper any different size. You could layer it with any type of thing that you wanted to layer it with. I think I want a little more something something there. So I'm going to put one of these Tim Holtz strips there. I don't know what else, but I want something else pretty there. Maybe the Tim Holtz strip will be enough for me. So I'm going to do it like that. And then I'll Tim Holtz staple this one. And it's just this flippy notepad that has writing space and it has papers you can tear off and use. It looks like that. Just for the sake of showing you how I can fix it, <laughs> we're going to try something. So this has a hole back here in the back from where the Tim Holtz ephemera was hung on a rack, right? So I'm wondering if I can just punch that. My hole punch isn't going to be long enough. But if you had the crocodile big bite, you could get in there and punch that. Um, 
I'm going to try punching my paper and just having it line up with it. Remember, this is a trial. <laughs> it won't punch through all these papers. There we go. Okay, so now I have a hole here that I'm going to try to line up with that hole right there. Just in the, for the sake of trying to fix this. And then um, we're going to put a brad in right there. Mm -hmm. And then the end of the brad could go through the top. Do I want a brad or do I want a ribbon? I think I want a ribbon still. I'm still stuck on the ribbon part. Mm -hmm. A ribbon. Um, I need my pokey tool. So all I'm doing is I'm holding all of my paper so that it's lined up with the hole that's right here in the back. And that's where I'm going to put a little ribbon to keep these papers in. But I also need to get the hole to come to the front. And I'm going to do it with a pokey tool right through the art the hole that is already there from the Tim Holtz packaging that's how I was easy it was easy to poke a hole right there so all of those holes line up because they are the original holes from where it was hung at the store so see my pokey tool is holding it all together right there so I'm just going to put a ribbon through there let's find some cute ribbon I brought this basket of fibers and um, dyed seam bindings. Maybe we'll go super bright. I think we will go super bright. This one or even this bright pink. Mm. I have peachy, maybe peachy is prettier. I need help choosing a seam binding or I will be here all day. We'll use peachy. So I'm just going to take a piece, a long piece, and I'm going to tuck it through the hole, fold it in half, and loop it around itself. So I folded my ribbon in half, right, in two pieces, right? It's folded in half, and I'm going to pinch it. And I'm going to try my hardest to get it to go through all of these layers. And I'm gonna use that pokey tool to help me poke it in the hole. At least that's the idea. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't wanna go through the hole in the lease. Let me just pull the lace back off of this hole then, in that case. There we go. Try that guy again. Make your notepad before you put lace on the top of it. You won't have to fight with it like I'm doing right now. Not giving up. Goodness. <laughs> okay. One more time. Come on, guy. Go through to the back. Nope. He does not want to. I'm just going to hole punch it then. Hold the lace back already, so I have to squeeze it. <laughs> nope, I could get the crepidile out. <laughs> I am determined to get my seam binding through this hole. 
then it should go. It's not really that big of a hole, but it should go through there. Aha. Yes, we did it. Okay. So now that it's through, I'm going to tie a little bow at the top. And then I will fix my lace and we'll be good. Cool. Was it worth it? I don't know. But, <laughs> but that's what we did so far. So now at least I have lace at the top. We'll glue that here in a second. Cheryl needs to do a cute little video about the perfect bow because all of my bows come out looking like too floppy. Like, I don't know. Mine are never perfect, but they're floppy. Anyway, it's also going to have an embellishment right here in the center of the doily, but I don't have those in here. So that's my scrappy little notepad and it's all tied in. Now, if you wanted, when you get this, you could change out the paper. However, I'm going to glue it down, so nobody's really going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to glue this doily just a little bit right here because I pulled it up when I was trying to get the hole. There we go. Okay. I think it's cute and I think it's worth it. That's kind of what it looks like. Anyway, I don't know if we're going to fight with the other ones. <laughs> we'll just make the notepads first. Bows. Crocodile, yes, that would have helped my hand a lot. I was too lazy to get out of the case. Bye bye. Enchiladas. Oh. Happy weekend. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so we made a scrappy notepad. We'll put that with our other things. Um, let me get this pulley tool. We can quickly assemble the other one, the other couple of these. So I'm going to hole punch this, and then I'm going to hole punch my paper. I'm going through lace, so it's hard. I'm going to use crocodile. <laughs> I'm going to quit fighting with the regular hole punch and just go ahead and quit being lazy and get it out because it's just so much easier with crocodile. Um, so I'm going to use a big hole on it. Sometimes my pin gets stuck and it doesn't want to open. Okay, using the big hole, make two little holes, kind of even. <laughs> there we go. Now, if you set your depth thing, they come out perfect. Don't be lazy. Set your depth thing. There we go. Okay, pop all those out. I'm going to leave this out because I'm going to chop my paper with it or punch my paper with it also. It's just this little guy kills your hand when you're going through like a pad of paper. Okay, back to these. Um, Cheryl is doing that challenge in Boho Daydreams. And her challenge, I think it's still going on. Yes, Cheryl? I'm supposed to be doing it, but I'm going to, don't worry. I'm going to do it. I have committed. What am I not putting on this one? Purple paper. Cheryl, what's the challenge now? What do we make? We make the envelopes, right? Envelope pockets.
envelope pockets, I believe. So then put your paper, your little notepad that you made. I mean, you might line up your paper better than I did. Stagger it, do whatever you want to do with it, right? But put your paper in there with this open, right? Put your paper in there. Hold it up where you want it to be and punch back through your holes with the big side of the thing. And measure, you got the depth set and you're going right back through the same hole. And you're just punching your paper pad that way. And then we will put our ribbon through it. Where is my clip? So since it's already lined up, I'm just going to clip it and hold it and I'll put ribbon through that in a second. Cheryl must not be here anymore. Maybe she's busy. But there's a challenge going on in Boho Daydreams. And it's not the kind of challenge where you have to mail anything to anyone. You're making pretty things and, um, you know, they're just like building your stash, right? You can make it for a current journal that you're working on, but otherwise it's just a piece of ephemera to add to your stash for later. You have extra paper. So this notepad's gonna be extra big. We'll save those. Okay. So I'm gonna make these pockets for Cheryl's challenge in Boho Daydreams here in a second. At least that's my plan. And that one didn't go quite in the same place where I got my lace. I got my lace. Okay. So let me clip that one as well. It just makes it easier when I try to put the ribbon through. Okie dokie. Um, for these ones, one of them is going to get bright pink ribbon. Magenta, I don't know, something like that. And then the other one, I'm going to do like a turquoise ribbon. I have this crinkled seat binding that I dyed a long time ago. I dyed every color of the rainbow when I did this. And this is the one where I just dyed like the whole entire hundred yard spool and I didn't um, untangle it or cut it to size first. So it was fun. Okay. Snipping off a piece. There we go. This time is the pockets folded like an envelope. Yep. So And then I will add the lacy clusters to the top. I just want to get my bow in there first so I don't have to fight with it. Envelope pockets are one of my favorite pockets to do. That's kind of a floppy bow too. See, Cheryl's bows always look perfect. I don't know how she does it. Maybe mine will look better once I get all the lace and the doilies at the top. <laughs> right? 
I know. It would be so much easier if we were just talking in person, right? Having a conversation. Yeah. I still need to try to figure out how we can do this sleepover event where we all are able to talk to each other and see what each other is working on. We're going to call it a sleepover, but we're not really sleeping. We're just like pajama crafting and sharing what we're doing on camera. Maybe, you know, like bounce to each other's house or something like that. And then, the you know, we can talk to each other that kind of way. I think it would be a fun activity to do as a group. So anyway. There's that one. And I did use very bright ribbon, but it's because this journal is very bright inside. And there's that one. Now let's put the lease on them, my favorite part. A retreat, Wendy? Oh, gosh. Eventually. Eventually we will do a retreat. But being that I can't even get to go to a retreat right now, we can't do a retreat right now. <laughs> But maybe in the future, I mean, definitely in the future, we will do a retreat. But so this guy is kind of the one I'm modeling these ones off of. We need the lace with the points. Where did I put it? Here's a piece of lace with points that will work. And so you just want to make sure you don't get your glue on your paper. If you feel like you need it, stick a piece of plastic under here. Like this is the Tim Holtz packaging plastic. I save it because it makes a good craft surface if you are working in a non-craft room like I am. Well, if I'm being honest, I'm wearing PJ bottoms. <laughs> I just figured, you know, you guys don't see the bottom half of me anyway. <laughs> so I cheated and wore PJ bottoms today. So even though I'm making three, they're all unique and different. Now, where is another piece of that lace? Is this one going to be wide enough? Not really. Let me see what else I have in here. I mean, if all else fails, I'll just go cut a piece off, which I think I will do. Hmm. <laughs> we can't even get to it to cut it. Okay, so I will not be cutting a piece of lace off. <laughs> the lace, I, this room is so packed full of stuff right now. It is just crazy packed full of stuff. And the new stuff isn't even in the room because it will not fit in the room. So I don't know how, this is the lace I'm looking for. It's sitting right next to me. I don't know how we're getting it in here for Tuesday, but we are getting it in here, so. I would tell you guys exactly what it is, but I there is somebody that just loves to watch my channel and see what I'm going to sell. And uh, yeah, anyway, I think you guys know where I'm going with that. So we will just see it together on Tuesday. A Zoom, something like that. But I think. We could, as long as we, you know, did it like in a time thing where we were at so-and-so's house at this time and, you know, the next person's house at a different time, I think we could do it just through um, StreamYard. So this doily might be a little large to get right there. We'll see. We'll see. No, I'm going to do it. 
but I think if we just like schedule, okay, we're at Vanessa's house at this time. And then, you know, because StreamYard has a maximum number of people that can be in StreamYard at the same time. That's why we don't have everyone right now be in StreamYard um, because there's a maximum number of people who can be streaming from your account in StreamYard. So as long as the first person, you know, logged out, the next person could log in. So we could keep it rolling like that. But I think we should plan the pajama party and work on a project together. And then we can all go to each other's house and, you know, see how the project, how they're doing it, how the project's going, et cetera. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same project if somebody didn't want to do it. But I think it would be fun. We'll do it. So that one might need a little bit of trimming or something when she's finally dry. This one needs a little trimming right now. <laughs> Stuck to my finger. So what do you guys think of pajama party? How many of you would come to pajama party? You don't have to show your face if you don't want to. You, you could just show your hands because I know, you know, a lot of people are shy about you know, whatever. For some reason in this industry, crafters seem to be shy. A lot of them, not all of them, obviously, but some of them. So you wouldn't even have to show your face. You could just show your hands if you wanted We could do like online retreat kind of, oh, it's sticking to me, online retreat kind of a thing. Okay. Now keep in mind, they need final fluffing and drying, but that's kind of what we have so far. And I know this pink ribbon looks super bright, but it's not done yet. So hang on. And I do want to make this removable. So I should have covered the back, but we're gonna cover the back later. Either that or I'm really just gonna glue it down. I'm not sure yet. You can tell I just get into a project and just do it. <laughs> yep, that happened. I don't mind the doily hanging over, but I, I don't want the lace hanging over. So I'm trimming the lace. But the doily can hang over. This one needs a little point trim. Okay, so there's those three. You don't have equipment to do that? If you have a cell phone with a camera, you can do it, Joyce. Yep, just a cell phone is all you need. Or you can use computer, laptop, tablet, um, iPad, whatever. And for people who don't wanna do any of the video, you know, that's okay too. Yeah, you don't have to. I just think, you know, some people would like to do it. Okay, I'm trying to pick the glue off my fingers. I do not like having fabric tack on my fingers. Those three are near completion. There's going to be something here in the center that matches this ribbon 
or has a coordinating color of this ribbon. And the reason why I did the blue is there is turquoisey blue down underneath there. And I might also trim up these pages a little bit to show more of my background. And then there was pink here. And there is peachy, peachy color, the peachy color. Anyway, it doesn't look bold <laughs> in the real life, but sometimes this blue on camera really, I don't know, looks too dark or something. Anyway, so there's those three. Let me clean up all of this little lacy cluster mess. So for Snippet, I have pieces of fabric already cut for Snippets because I was making them at one point and selling them in Etsy. And so I have strips of fabric and all I do is sit and I cut up a giant bowl full of all of my little lacy bits. And then I just glue them, tack them down lightly with glue and then sew them at the end with my sewing machine. But we can do it on camera. That would be fun too, Vanessa. Okie dokie. We have three little notepads. They do need a little embellishment at the top of them, but they're coming along. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me all the time. We have these that we needed to decorate. My go-to is these Anna Griffin flowers, and I will tell you why. Because these are new scrapbook papers, and these are new flowers. <laughs> and they really just, the new and the new goes together so perfectly, right? Like... If I use German scrap on brand new modern cardstock, it just looks a little weird. So I'm going to use Anna Griffin flowers to decorate these. Like, I mean, it's really, really easy with Anna Griffin flowers. <laughs> it's too easy almost. I need something different here. Like the dark blue and the dark purple is just too dark. Ooh, there's another tulip. I love tulips. I have hydrangeas still from Costco. They didn't die yet. They're, they are wilting, though. They're like, they're going to die soon. I don't know what Costco is going to have next, but I'm anxious to see because I have loved all of their spring flowers. I had their tulips when they had tulips. Um, it was February. It was for Valentine's Day that they had tulips here. Now, keep in mind, I'm in Arizona, and so the weather is significantly different here. It gets hot pretty quick. Like, we were at 94, 97, something like that today. Yeah, it's very hot. The air conditioning is already on. The air conditioning is usually on in April. Definitely by May. I mean, that little butterfly would be cute if I could find a different kind of flower. There's even cute little bows. I need that bow. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do you need a holder on a desk? You would, unless you have a way of like putting it on a bookshelf where the camera part just hangs over the edge of a bookshelf or something like that. You, you could get away with that one, but you would have to figure out how to rig something to hold your phone up there, like a stack of books on your kitchen table with, because, so you know how the phones have the camera part at the end? So stack up a stack of books like on your dining table and just have the camera part hanging over to where it can film down underneath of you. That's one idea. If you didn't want to buy a holder just for the, you know, the one time thing or something like that. But if you did buy a holder, Joyce, then you could start making YouTube videos. Everyone would like to see. So I think those flowers are good. I was just digging through here to see if there was anything else. This one is actually pretty cute too. See these dimensional ones though? This is a pocket, so you'd have to fight with the dimension. I really like this one better, but how are you going to get stuff in and out with dimension? You're not, so. Yeah. What about this guy? Is he too small? He is. 
You like weird? <laughs> Can't craft and hold a phone? Well, you could if you were crafting with one hand, but it would be really difficult. It would be really difficult for you. It'd be difficult for anybody, right? So it's not something we're going to do right away. So no one feel like they have to just run out and do anything because honestly, I don't know when this would happen. Um, Vanessa is going on a retreat. I want that there, but I'm going to have to tone down those green leaves. Those green will have to have some vintage photo on them if they're going to be used. That one just blends in way too much, I think. It's either that one or that one. <laughs> well, I think phone holders, you could get them on Amazon for like $20 or something like that. I have a, it's mounted on the desk in the back, but I have an extra one back there um, just in case. And that one was just like a $20 one from, from Amazon. So I think those are the flowers I'm going to go with. So we need to vote on this. Let me tone down these green leaves. Or am I going to tone them down? What do you guys think? Tone them down or leave them? Maybe I'm leaving them. Because this one just blends in way too much. It does. Okay. We're doing this one. <laughs> Decision made. Now, do we want to put a little book page? Because I, I definitely want book page on those two and probably that one. Let's do a little book page back there. And maybe even a little bit of white doily with the book page. We have a little bit of music. Sorry, now my bin of paper is way back here in the back. Let me just change it because we have to move the lace bin and pull the paper one to the front and then put the lace one in the back. Now I can dig through it without being like stretched across the desk. <laughs> so I just want some book page with some nice font on it, you know, like nice German font book page. You use whatever you want to use. Um, wherever that cookbook is, actually, let's do that. I'm all over the place. So one of them can be music for certain. One of them can be decorated with music like this guy. I chose the music on this one because I liked the black and white music with these gray stripes. So the music will still have to be torn down some, but this is what I'm going to do on this one. And I am going to put the whole reinforcer and make this a tag. I would love to craft with you guys. I mean, you know, I am, but like it's one sided. <laughs> I would like it to be two sided where I can see what you guys are making and talk to you guys like verbally. <laughs> Aw. Okay, so I'm going to use the cookbook pages that were included in the kit. They're somewhere down here. Instead of the very old book page, because I think the cookbook pages match the feel of this journal more than old, super old rag paper book pages. Assuming I can find any cookbook pages. <laughs> there are some down here somewhere, I promise. Goodness, they're all the way at the bottom. Where are they? Okay. Oh, these! Guys, I wanted to show you how to make this into a uh, a slot pocket. 
we're out of time for today. But next time, I'm going to show you how to make this into a slotted pocket. It's very simple. I'm going to glue it to a tag, and I'm going to cut little slots out of these lines. But I use something special to cut those out. So I'm putting that on the top so I don't forget, because we're making that next time. Um, I can't find the cookbook page. I don't know where it's at, but I just, <laughs> just need some cookbook page for those. Some more modern paper in there. Do I seriously not have any in here? How can I not have any cookbook pages in this big giant bucket of pages? Well, anyway, like this is my glue book page and it's a more modern white, not old paper. I'm just going to use it. It will work. That guy and that guy are good. I need one for this. Where's my glue book? Right here. Leave them. <laughs> Everyone wants to see your crafty. We are always our own worst critics about everything. Seriously. Like, I get some critics. You guys know I get some critics. There are some people who, for whatever reason, are very offended by what I do. I don't know why. They just are. And so, I get some critics, right? But I am always harder on myself than any of those critics are. Like, Vanessa recently had an interaction with someone who was not being kind to her. But, you know... Even the worst people, I'm still harder on myself than those people are on me. <laughs> and it's something that I'm trying to work on, not being so critical of myself. However, you guys know that is difficult for me, <laughs> right? It's difficult for all of us. But I think a lot of times people are afraid to show their work online because, you know, they're critical of themselves, first of all. Joyce, I think you make beautiful things, and I think people would love to see them. I know people would. So I'm just decorating right here. And I will glue that here in just a second. And then I want to put some tiny lace across these pockets. I know we're running out of time, so I will try to be speedy. And at least we can get six nice pieces of ephemera done. And I promise next time we will sew in our signatures. If you guys are waiting for me to sew in a signature, I promise next time we will do that. I need to tear off this little piece right here. I just was not quite ready. I mean, I could have done it, but then I would have had to pay the price later because something I wanted wouldn't have worked because I didn't get to it yet, but I'll get it done. And then on next Friday, um, we'll sew in our signature and I will have done that napkin pro I'll, I'll save the napkin project and do it with you guys. I will. That was something I told you guys I was gonna do with you. So I will save the napkin project and do it with you guys. I will have um, a splat box or something so I can spray that spray stuff. And I will also do it with glue just because I said we were going to do it. And then I got behind today and didn't get all my supplies in here and prepped. So, yeah. Sheila says, I was just thinking about those unkind people who have never made a video. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
Well, I'm trying to work on the letting it roll off my back. It's hard because one of the people that causes me the most grief used to be someone that I considered a friend. And so it's hard when it's like, you know, someone that you thought was a friend. That's all. <laughs> it just makes it that much harder, I guess. But anyway, let's glue these flowers down. And then let's put some lace quick. Quick, quick. Come on, art glitter. And I'm going to leave this out on my desk so that I don't forget to fill it again. Because if I put it back in this cart, I'm just going to forget again. Okay. And this flower is getting a cute little bow. I just thought the little bow went really nicely with the Maggie Holmes paper. Maybe I'll see about getting some blue firm paper for you guys. I think that would be a good idea. If I get some blue firm paper for you guys, the little holes of the bow poke out. You want me to get blue firm paper? Yes or no, blue firm paper in comments and I'll get blue firm paper for you guys. There's the bow. Yes, I am definitely my own worst enemy too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Aw, <Aww>, Sheila. <laughs> you guys are always so sweet to me. I so appreciate it. Okay. There we go. Let me get some glue on this little stem. And I decided not to tone down those leaves. So now we're just living with whatever color green they are. If I really hate it, I'm not going to go back. But so, so far we're here. And we're here. And we're here. And I'm going to put tiny little lace down each one of these. Okay. Can I do it quick? Maybe. It's just, I don't know. People are so unhappy these days. Yes. Spray the cardstock. Are you guys talking about the napkin? When you use the piece of pretty spray the napkin or the substrate, the cardstock, the substrate, whatever you're sticking down to it. And remember that trick of folding. So like when I do it, I'm going to use cardstock and I'm going to fold my cardstock in a U after I've glued it. So I've sprayed it with the adhesive spray in a splat box or outside or somewhere safe. And then just on the very edges, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to bend it like this and pretend that my napkin was laying down here with the wrong side facing up. So your good side underneath, take your cardstock like this, put that, that U so that it, it touches your napkin first right here in, in the U, right, right there. Put it down like that and then let these sides come out. That way you don't get wrinkles underneath. Because if you try just to go like this, you're gonna move it slightly and it's gonna get a wrinkle. Jessica Rapp did a video. She didn't, she used napkin and she used the adhesive spray and everything like that. I don't know what she made, maybe tags out of it. Maybe she showed, I don't remember she showing in her showing in that video. <laughs> I'm not fishing for compliments, guys, and I really appreciate everything. <laughs> you guys are very kind. Anyway, I'm going to do tiny lace quickly. And then I'm going to flip this camera around and we're going to say goodnight. <laughs> I got to get to tiny lace. So Sheila, they're all here and they all want me to do boho journal kit next time. <laughs> I 
they have been waiting for boho journal kit so i'm gonna do boho journal kit very soon see this is the tiny lace and it's gonna be so cute plus i can use fabric tuck let's do it Hope I got enough glue on that. Okay, next. <laughs> I think maybe we should do a little collaboration with it. I think we should do Sheila trims in it. We'll talk. Okay. So now I'm going to go this way with it. I'm just going to cut this long for the moment and let that sit. Uh-oh. Sheila is Boho Daydreams. She has Boho Daydreams on Facebook and also a YouTube channel. Let's see, I know Sheila doesn't mind if I mention. Everyone always has wonderful things to say about Sheila. Speaking of, I got a package from Sheila. I forgot about it, but it is sitting right here. So I'll show you guys that here in a second. I'll show you it right before we say goodnight. I got some beautiful things from her. I'm gonna leave that one long for a second too. I just need to make sure I don't glue my pocket shut. Yep. Okay. One more to go. Boho is so fun. There are journal makers and they make boho all the time. That's their style. I like to bounce around. I love boho, but I, I need to bounce around. Mostly probably because I have all kinds of different supplies, right? I don't know. I think when I first started making journals, I couldn't make up my mind what exactly I wanted to do. And honestly, I didn't even know that I was going to be a journal maker. For years, I was just like, well, I'm making cards and I'm making scrapbooks. And then I make these, these weird books with like vintage stuff in them, you know. And then one day, I saw a YouTube video and somebody was calling it a junk journal. Well, apparently I was making junk journals. <laughs> I was just making books with all kinds of vintage things. And <laughs> I didn't know that they were technically called junk journals. And then after I learned that and found the whole junk journal community, I just couldn't, I, I don't know. I couldn't come back from it. They lo I was lost. <laughs> I gave up on everything and did junk journals. Oh, I did get my French blue bundles. I'm going to show them to you here in a second. Yep.
I have to bounce around. I just, I like themes. I really like doing a themed journal and carrying that theme, you know, throughout like a series of journals. That's kind of my thing. Is this glue just going to keep bubbling? Yes, it is. Sorry. But it needs to come down before I can stick the cap on. <laughs> Let me trim these quick so that we can see what they look like without looking goofy. And then I will show you my Sheila package. We will say good night. And also we did not do our early bird giveaway for last for this Tuesday, you know, this past Tuesday sale. So at the beginning of the next sale, we will have the winner from that show, and we will be doing the winner for Tuesday also. So don't think I forgot about you guys from Tuesday. We're getting caught up. Basically, a whole lot of $25 gift certificates are being given out. Okay, that's what he came out looking like. He's still getting that whole reinforcer, but I'm not going to keep you guys here while I put a whole reinforcer in there and a hole, right, to make him like a tag. So he has a tag here or a pocket, a tag, a pocket here. This little book page is hanging over right here. It kind of needs trimmed or folded. We could round it over. Okay. So he has pocket here, and he has pocket here, a little tuck. And if I make him a tag, I could put a pocket with, with a leftover piece of paper, put a pocket in the back, and then he could just be like a clipped in piece of ephemera. This one has pocket here and has pocket here. He has a little piece of paper sticking over also. And then this one, same thing. Big pocket here. My lace needs to come up just a smidge. And then pocket here. And same thing. My lace needs to come up just a smidge. Okie dokie. So we made those. We made scrappy notepads. I made this little um, matchbook notepad, but he is not embellished yet. Can I put my lid on my glue? I know I think most of us were we were making cool things and we didn't even know how cool they were I know all right so to show you Sheila's things put away a couple things so I have some space and get this glue off my fingers <laughs> yep okay here we go this is sheila boho daydreams this is what i just got in the mail come on ephemera get out of the way nobody cares about ephemera when we have this to look at so i got of course three bundles of the french blues i believe she called it um Vanessa is solely, well, not solely, but Vanessa is really responsible for this because Vanessa did a little flip through video or post on her Facebook group showing all of these lovely trims that are in here. And I will show you guys too up close, but she showed, and then I was like, French blues, I have to have them. And here's why I have to have them because you guys know that I love these, right? You guys know, I love the blue ledger and the blue French letters. Look, look at how well Sheila's French blue bundle matches the actual old. This is from 1860 or 1880. I mean, it's the same exact perfect color. And I'm going to be doing blue French journals with Sheila trims in them. So I needed three because when I make the French ones, I have to make a lot because I have requests. But anyway, so again, the color is spot on for antique French blue. It's like, look at that. It's spot on. 
Look at the color variation in the letters. Look at her trims. And this is just a random stack of letters that I pulled out. It's crazy matching. Anyway, so that's the French blue. Let's look up close. She ties it with her dyed um, sari trim. And these can be used for embellishments or any kind of tag toppers, uh, whatever you want to do. So this tie is also useful. But these are the blues. And it's a shade, it's a, a, you know, different shades, right? It's not all one shade. And that is exactly what we want. And lots of them have the gold and the sequins and the mirrors. And some of them are beaded. Some have pearls on them. Like, they're just so gorgeous. So I'll kind of go a little faster. But there's so, like, there's some in here that, Sheila, I, I must have more of. I must have more. Like, they're different. Look at this. It's so gorgeous. And they're not like all skinny or all thick. And they're not all straight cut. Some are scalloped. Some are thin. Some are wide. It's just perfect. So many pretties. Now, Sheila does a much better job showing them than I do, but this one right here is my all-time favorite. I wish that I had, like, a duvet cover made out of that for my king-size bed, but I don't. Kind of hard to show, but Sheila does a much better job showing these. And so Sheila is um, offering these. Right now, she's prepping for a retreat. Is she in here talking? I don't see her. But right now, she's prepping for a retreat. And um, after that retreat prep, I think she'll be taking orders. She might take orders now. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm a member of her Patreon group. So these are all three the same French blues. They're gorgeous. I just cannot. They're, those are my favorite. But then, if you weren't a French blue girl, I have a big bundle of pinks. <laughs> So she offered these French blues to her Patreon members. If you were a Patreon member, you got notifications. For right now, she's prepping for a retreat. So I don't know if she has these available or not. You will have to um, go to probably Boho Daydream's Facebook group and maybe ask there or contact her um, and ask her. These are the pinks. And they're all different kinds of shades of pink, all different embroidery, um, sequence, beading, all different kinds. So pinks and blues, two of my favorite kind of shades, right? Like I am not doing these justice. I should have opened these up, but I like to keep them tight and perfect and just oogle and google over them for a while. And then there's some really wide ones back here in the back. But I also had to have this one. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Vanessa. I wasn't sure how you wanted to all work all that. So this one is pearl. Like there's little pearls beads in here and sequins beads and mirrors and gold. Look at these little gold flowers. Look at how cute they are. And in person, they're not like it's in your face, but they're the perfect vintage gold. They're gorgeous. All these mirrors. Then there's whites. Like we can use all the golds, right? We can use all that. Then we get whites. We always use whites and neutrals. Then, bam, red. It's gorgeous. Red, red, red. There's several of them there. And then we go into like flowers, right? Then greens, and it's like a perfect sagey green. And then a deeper green. A little bit of like Kelly green, moss green. And then back here, I'm skipping some here. Green, green, green with flowers, perfect for springtime. That might need to make an appearance in a spring journal. I just saw that one. And more sage. It's gorgeous. That's what I scored. 
now she has limited quantities of things and you know stuff like that so you just best thing to do is wait for her to have a spot available on her patreon become a member on her patreon her patreon is very reasonable and then you get kind of um notifications when she has things available yep and she looks just the nicest person so yeah <laughs> they are vanessa they are <laughs> thank you thank you cheryl thank you vanessa thank you for helping with that <laughs> Well, pink is it for everyone, but I love pink. The time it takes, and I know this from making paper bundles for you guys, the time that it takes to make any type of bundle or pack or anything like that, you don't really necessarily think that it's going to take all of the time that it takes, but it takes a significant amount of time, right? It just does. It's really, really hard to uh, assemble things like that in quality and in quantity. And that's her thing. And that's also my thing. Quality, but also quantity to meet the needs of everyone who wants one, right? Anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm going to flip this camera back around right there. So thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I had a good time. We never seem to accomplish as much in three hours as what I would make probably if I wasn't live. And I don't exactly know how or why that happens, but it does seem to be where um, <laughs> you just get less done. I don't, you're distracted or you, you, cause you're looking back at a screen and reading comments and then you're coming back over here. It's just slightly different. Um, and plus when I'm in my regular craft room, I can sit down and like everything is at arm's reach. So it's a little easier that way. So <laughs> Vanessa, <laughs> you're so funny. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we will get to sew in our signature next time we'll do the napkin project. And honestly, next time I have got to start gluing in pockets and filling them because we will have one, like after next Friday, we will have one or possibly two more. And then I am wrapping up and being done with spring junk journal. And I will move on to a small project in between spring junk journal and whatever the next journal kit is going to be. And that next journal kit, I should have ready for you guys by the time we're done with the spring one to show you. And that way, um, I did show the spring one a couple times, but I did get some people that said that they didn't know it came out and then they missed it. So I'm going to try to show you the next journal kit multiple times on Friday and on Tuesday. Um, that way I can hopefully not miss out on people who wanted one, if that makes sense. Thank you, Jamie. It's not perfect, but it's also not completely done yet because every single time when we're done here, I go over there in the other craft room and finish things the way that I need to finish them. I just feel like they're not done. And then I go over there and make them feel done, if that makes sense. I don't know. You'll see it all when it's done. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cheryl's tired. Okay. I'm going to say good night. Thank you for joining me. Have a happy weekend. And I will see you here on Tuesday. Tuesday is all brand new French shipment that came in. You guys are going to fall out of your chairs. You're going to pass out. And yeah, <laughs> I have not even finished opening it yet because there is that much stuff and I have had it for a while, but everything I have opened so far. I was like, I can't, I can't share this. I can't share this with you guys. I have to keep it. And then I was like, but what are you going to do with a million? So you got to share, right? So anyway, I am sharing, but it's really great stuff and you're going to love it. On, on the next kit. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I get it now. I thought you were saying your past like slapped me tired. <laughs> I get it now. Okay.
well, we'll have to get that worked out. But um, I'm going to try to make more kits, meaning that I'm not going to include like a quilt cover that only can make so many um, covers. So we will figure that out. I need to figure out a theme, first of all. <laughs> I would love to do the boho, but I'm not sure that I have that worked out in my head yet. So we might do one before we get to boho. We'll see. Okay, I'm letting you guys go. Thank you, Vanessa, for being here and helping out. I really appreciate you being here and helping out and chat and stuff. We will get together and do schedule a craft with me, with Vanessa and I, both on camera, where we make something. It might be a snippet roll. I don't know what it's going to be. But we will also get that scheduled with Vanessa so both of us can craft. It probably, it might be on Friday, craft with me, or it might just be a random day. So if you see a random pop up where it says we're going live. Join us and see what's happening. <laughs> okay. Good night. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me. Bye guys. Yep. See you Tuesday, Tuesday at 6 p.m. <laughs> Bye guys.